Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Talat Nas and today we will study about the nerve membrane potentials, initiation and propagation of nerve impulse. Objectives By the end of this session, students should be able to understand the biophysics of cell membrane potentials, electrochemical potential differences across the membrane, nurse potential and nurse equation, Goldman equation, electrochemical basis of resting membrane potential, generation and propagation of action potential, all or nothing principle. Introduction The neuron is the basic working unit of the brain. It is a specialized cell designed to transmit information to other nerve cells, muscles and gland cells. As you can see the picture, the, this cell is entirely different from the cells you have studied like the blood cells, um, for example, the muscle cells or the cells in the lungs, cells in uh, skin and other types of the cells. Basically, the neuron consists of uh, three major portions. First part is consisting of uh, dendrites. The other part is cell body and then a long thread like structure is exon. So all these parts collectively form a neuron and uh, their function is uh, to, uh, to generate and uh, propagate the nerve impulses. It not only generate uh, and uh, it, it, uh, the dendrites in the neuron receive the nerve signals and then the cell body integrate the nerve signals and the exons pass these signals onward towards uh, uh, the glandular cells or the muscle cells or to the other nerve cells. For the basic idea about uh, the uh, membrane potentials across the nerve, uh, I will like to show you a brief video that will at least give you the basic idea how the nerve cells work. So let's watch the video and then we will proceed further towards our lecture. How does the pain you experience when you burn your hand result so quickly in an action by your muscles? Many animals respond to environmental stimuli using specialized cells called neurons. A stimulus is detected by sensory receptors and the body responds through motor effectors. These cells working together allow you to respond very quickly to threats. When you touch something hot, heat receptors of a sensory neuron detect the stimuli and send the information of heat to an interneuron in your central nervous system. From there, a motor neuron sends a response from your central nervous system to the skeletal muscles in your arm, causing them to contract and pull your hand away. The fundamental process of neural transmission that underlies this action occurs in all neurons of the body. Neurons transmit this information through changes in the electrical potential of the membrane by the movement of ions across the membrane. An electrochemical gradient governs the movement of these ions, resulting in an electrical impulse. The resting membrane potential in a neuron, when the cell is not firing an impulse, is established by the unequal distribution of sodium ions outside of the cell and potassium ions inside the cell, making the outside of the cell more positively charged compared to the inside. The electrochemical gradient is established and maintained by an enzyme called sodium-potassium ATPase. When a neuron is stimulated, sodium ion channels open and sodium ions flow into the cell. 
This leads to a change in the electrical potential across the membrane called depolarization. The depolarizing electrical potential travels down the dendrites and over the cell body. Multiple electrical potentials will combine at the axon hillock in a process called summation. If the depolarization is large enough, an action potential is triggered. Action potentials are all or none electrical impulses that maintain their amplitude and strength down the length of the axon. The action potential travels down the axon when the depolarization of an area of membrane causes adjacent voltage-gated sodium ion channels to open. The influx of sodium ions results in membrane depolarization along the membrane. After a short delay, potassium ion channels open and potassium ions flow out, repolarizing the membrane. For the neuron to fire again, the resting membrane potential needs to be re-established. Sodium-potassium ATPase is used to move sodium and potassium ions against their concentration gradients, re-establishing the resting membrane potential. As the action potential moves down the axon, ions are diffusing only a short distance allowing the signal to move quickly. At the axon terminal, the electrical impulse passes to another cell at a cellular connection called a synapse. The space between the presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic cell is called the synaptic cleft. The presynaptic neuron contains signal molecules called neurotransmitters that are packaged inside vesicles. When an action potential reaches the end of a neuron, neurotransmitters are released by exocytosis from the neuron into the synaptic cleft. Neurotransmitters bind to the adjacent cell at receptor sites attached to ion channels. The channels open, allowing the movement of ions into or out of the effector cell, which alters its membrane potential, thereby transmitting the signal from the neuron to the effector cell. Because nerve impulses move very rapidly down the axon of a neuron and move from cell to cell across synapses, you react quickly to a stimulus, like burning your finger. So, by watching this video, I hope you have some idea about uh, how the nerve impulses are generated and propagated and how the signals are transmitted and integrated and then finally you will respond against uh, uh, the message you have received so basically the nerve impulse the waves of electrochemical changes that travel along the length of the neuron is called nerve impulse and uh, nerve impulse carry different messages and signals from one cell to another cell so the basic idea behind the nerve impulse is the electrochemical changes to be traveled through the length, length of the nerve cell so uh, the the basic uh, physiology behind the membrane potential is uh, the physics biophysics of the potential in, in your physics, you have uh, you must have studied about the potential, and you know whenever there are charges, it will create potential. So, uh, in case uh, of the physics, we have studied about uh, the electrons when they travel in the in in the wire, they will create some charges, and due to the presence of these charges. There, they will have some current or the electrical potential. So the presence of positive and negative charges that produce energy to do a work is the electrical potential. Now come to the membrane potential. As we said that the charges are basically responsible for the potential. Right? Potential is basically the energy or the force. So the charges across the cell membrane due to the diffusion of the ions we will we will study in detail about the uh, membrane potentials then you will uh, know how the charges are present across the cell membrane 
and how the diffusion of these ions will create the charges and the membrane potential. Now the diffusion potential. Diffusion potential causes by an ion concentration difference on the two sides of the nerve cell membrane. As you know, the definition of the diffusion is that the movement of the ions from the higher concentration area or the molecules from the higher concentration area to the low concentration area through a semi-permeable membrane means a membrane which is permeable to some ions but not permeable to all ions. So here the case is similar that uh, the diffusion potential will be gen created when some of the ions move from one side to another side and have a concentration difference across the membrane. So we will uh, study the diffusion potential in detail in coming slides. But before that we must know which ions are in high concentration outside the cell and which ions are in uh, high concentration inside the cell membrane. So basically here we are talking about the nerve cell. As you can see this, this part is the outside of the cell membrane and this is the inside of the cell membrane. Outside of the cell membrane, we observe that there is a high concentration of sodium ion and uh, chloride ion. So the positive ion in the high concentration outside the cell is the sodium ion and this sodium ion will tend to move towards the inside because of the concentration gradient. However, in the inside you can see a high concentration of potassium ions are present along with some of the chloride ion, sodium ion and this A. This A is representing N ion. N ion is the negative ion and, uh, and uh, basically these uh, are the inorganic proteins or inorganic acids and uh, large proteins. So the inorganic acids and the large proteins have negative ions. So this A can represent any of the negative ion present inside the cell. And you know these are in large in size. If you compare it with the sodium chloride and potassium ions, this A is larger in size. So the larger proteins are present inside the cell and create negativity inside the cell because they can also not move from one side to another side. So now you have the basic idea that the sodium ions in high concentration outside and potassium ions are in high concentration inside the cell membrane. Before we go forward towards the resting membrane potential and action potential, I would like to discuss something about the equilibrium potential or the nurse potential. The diffusion potential across the membrane that exactly opposes the net diffusion of a particular ion, for example the sodium ion through the membrane is called the nurse potential for that ion. What does it mean? For example, a potassium ion is trying to move the outside. Okay, So after some time, the force, some forces will be generated that will oppose the movement of this potassium ion from inside to the outside, right? And these forces then block the movement of the potassium ion. At that point, the membrane potential will be known as nursed potential for the potassium. To understand that this concept of the nurse potential or the equilibrium potential where there will be no net diffusion of the particular ion from one side to the another side is the nurse potential and uh, the magnitude the value of the nurse potential can be determined by the nurse equation to understand it better first we will see this video diffusion take place when the potassium ion is in higher concentration at one side of the membrane and tend to move the other side of the membrane. Potassium ions are in higher concentration inside the cell 
and try to move outside the cell. This movement makes the cell more negative from inside because positive ions are moving outside. The force with which ions are moving outside the cell concern, uh, outside is the concentration gradient and the negativity inside create an opposing electrical force. That's try to block the net diffusion of potassium outside. At this point, the concentration gradient and electrical gradient become equal and stop the potassium diffusion. At this point, the potential difference across the membrane due to potassium ion is known as nurse potential and its value is minus 86 millivolt. And if we consider the sodium ions movement, the nurse potential is plus 61 millivolt. So, in the video what we have discussed, we discussed that if a membrane is only permeable, if we consider, we assume that uh, the membrane is only permeable for the movement of potassium ion. So, of course, the, because the inside of the membrane has high concentration of the potassium, so potassium will move outside the cell against the concentration gradients because it want to move from high concentration area to the low concentration area. So, the potassium will move from inside to outside. In that case, when the potassium was moving from inside to outside, it will carry positive charges from inside to outside and create negativity inside the cell. So, there are two forces. One force that moves the potassium inside to outside. It is known as concentration gradient. And the other force that, that moves this potassium from outside to inside or block the movement of the potassium from inside to outside is the electrical gradient because when the potassium positive ion is moving from inside to outside it carry the positivity from inside to outside and it will create a force that force will hinder the movement of this potassium so at that point when only the potassium is permeable when we measure uh, the membrane potential it will give the value of minus 94 millivolt that is negative from inside and similarly, if we have an option that uh, we can stop all the other ions, that is patching the other ions, uh, the technique is patch clamp technique. So, if we patch the other ions and will allow only the movement of the sodium ion, of course, sodium will move from outside to inside against because of the concentration gradient because this outside the concentration of sodium is high so sodium will try to move from high concentration area to low concentration area but when the sodium was moving from outside to inside a force will develop that will hinder the movement of sodium ions from outside to inside and that force is will be the electrical gradient so the point, time will reach when this electrical gradient and uh, the concentration gradient they these forces become equal and at that time if we measure the membrane potential its value will be plus 61 millivolt this is the formula of uh, the nurse equation to calculate the equilibrium potential but we are not going in detail this is just for the information how the nurse uh, equation is derived from uh, this is the detail of this. So, what we did, we calculate the nurse potential for the potassium ions and for the sodium ions at the resting membrane potential. So, uh, uh, as you see the formula, electromotive force, of course, uh, uh, this is a force, potential is a force that I already tell you. So, with the help of the concentration inside and concentration outside for the univalent ion, that is the valency is one okay so with the and uh, the other uh, point to be mentioned is that for the nurse potential we can use only one ion concentration means if we are using sodium we can use sodium only not uh, the sodium potential collectively for the nurse potential equation because in this equation we don't have the option to add more than one ion so, uh, for the uh, potassium, it is minus 94 millivolt that we already discussed. And for the sodium, its value will be plus 61 millivolt. 
we have another equation to calculate the membrane potential at the equilibrium when the net diffusion of the ions will stop at that point uh, we can calculate the membrane potential with the help of goldman equation goldman uh, equation give you uh, the liberty that you can add more than one ion in this equation um, so basically uh, sodium potassium and chloride ions uh, are used to calculate the uh, goldman equation potential with the goldman equation and the value is uh, minus 86 millivolt of the resting membrane potential with the help of the goldman equation when we take only three ions that is sodium potassium and chloride ions now come to the resting membrane potential so the resting membrane potential is the membrane potential difference that exists in the nerve cell at rest when no stimulus is applied so there are the charges across the cell membrane and the, due to these charges there is a potential difference across the cell membrane that is positivity and negativity so at that state when we measure the membrane potential with the help of the voltmeter it will give us the resting membrane potential resting membrane potential for the nerve fibers large nerve fibers at the resting state is about minus 70 millivolt resting membrane can be different for different types of the cells for example its value is minus 90 millivolt for the skeletal muscles resting membrane potential is the potential inside the fiber is uh, 70 millivolt more negative than the potential inside the ecf on the outside of the fiber always remember we take the value from inside of the cell okay whenever we calculate the resting membrane potential we take the value from inside of the cell not out of the cell okay so the resting membrane potential is basically uh, dependent upon the following factors ionic distribution across the membrane I gave you some idea about the ionic distribution that uh, which ion is in high concentration outside and which ion is in uh, high concentration inside the cell. So this is about uh, the ionic concentration and you know that during the resting membrane potential there is a high concentration of potassium inside the cell. And then the membrane permeability. The membrane permeability means the membrane will allow a certain ion to move easily and uh, uh, produce some hindrance in the movement of other type of cells for example uh, potassium is 100 potassium ion is 100 percent permeable to uh, the cell membrane so potassium can move inside and outside easily and the other factor that is contributing to the resting membrane potential is the sodium potassium pump so there are three main factors that are contributing in the resting membrane potential first is the ionic distribution second is the membrane permeability and third one is the sodium potassium pump so uh, this is the picture that is showing uh, the main idea about uh, this is the nerve cell and this is the distribution of the uh, ion across the cell membrane and this is the sodium potassium pump that is pumping three sodium ions outside the cell and two potassium ions inside the cell so that to maintain the negativity inside uh, we, will, uh, we will discuss about this uh, uh, in the later slides with the help of uh, animated video so you will understand so uh, the other thing is the potassium leaves the cell because of the concentration gradient you can see there is a high concentration of potassium so potassium will move from inside to outside but because of the electrical gradient because of the negativity of the uh, when the potassium move outside and the negative ions inside the cell so this negativity will attract the potassium again and it will move inside as i tell you that the permeability is very high for the potassium ion so it can move in and out very easily and these are the values of the resting membrane potential in different cell types um, you can see in the neurons it is about minus 60 to minus 70 millivolt 
For the skeletal muscle, it is minus 85 to minus 95 millivolt. For smooth muscles, it is quite low. That is minus 50 to minus 60 millivolt and so on. Origin of normal resting membrane potential. As uh, we already discussed, uh, but give you the basic idea that contribution of potassium diffusion potential. In the previous slides, we have calculated the potassium diffusion, uh, nurse potential for the potassium diffusion. And with the, uh, the contribution of the potassium diffusion, potential is minus 94 millivolt in the resting membrane potential. And if the sodium diffusion occur only, uh, not considering the other ions, in that case, the sodium diffusion uh, will be plus 60 milli, 61 millivolt that contribute to the resting membrane potential. So we will have two values of resting membrane potential, one from the potassium diffusion and one from the sodium diffusion. But the Goldberg equation said that the potential inside the membrane is minus 86 millivolt during resting state. So we, as uh, the Goldman said that the potassium is 100 times more permeable than the sodium ion. Therefore, the potassium contribute more to the resting membrane potential. Okay, we will see it, it is true or not. Okay, see the potassium diffusion potential is minus 94 millivolt and the membrane potential, resting membrane potential, collective resting membrane potential is about minus 86 millivolt. So this value is closer to this value. Okay, but this value for the sodium is not close to the resting membrane potential. So we can say that the most contribution is from the potassium in the resting membrane potential. Now see, this is uh, the membrane where only the potassium is contributing to the resting membrane potential, which is minus 94 millivolt when the potassium is only moving. Okay. In case when sodium and potassium both are contributing to the resting membrane potential which is about uh, minus 90 millivolt in that case we observed that only for the two ions we are considering only sodium and potassium ions if these two ions are contributing or moving uh, during the resting state what we have seen that if the potassium alone causing the resting membrane potential the value will be minus 94 millivolt and if sodium and potassium collectively contribute then value will be minus 86 millivolt but the actual value in reality what we find out we find that minus 90 millivolt uh, was calc was uh, measured through the voltmeter now there is a difference of 4 millivolt that is 86 millivolt and 90 millivolt so what uh, uh, the minus 4 will be contributed from okay the minus 4 will be contributed from the sodium potassium pump sodium okay. potassium pump is an electrogenic pump which pump three sodium ions outside the cell and two potassium ions inside the cell and it participate in the resting membrane potential because the movement of the three sodium ions leave negativity inside the cell because the positivity is moving outside the cell. So this is how the sodium potassium pump participate in the resting membrane potential. So we see that uh, sodium potassium pump is electrogenic pump that is uh, causes the concentration gradient and contribute minus 4 millivolt in the overall resting membrane potential. So see diffusion potential of sodium and potassium that is uh, sodium and potassium are moving and we calculate by patching uh, the sodium potassium by, by patching the other ions and calculating only the sodium and potassium concentration at that point we get 86 millivolt minus 86 millivolt that is a uh, uh, negative inside the membrane and the sodium potassium pump contribute about minus 4 millivolt 
So finally we will get the resting membrane potential value will be minus 90 millivolt. So when there is no conduction velocity, when the nerve cell is in the resting state, there is no conduction of the nerve impulse, there is no conduction of the message and that at that time the value of the resting membrane potential, the charges present on the membrane from inside is minus 90 millivolt. So this is the force, uh, the membrane potential inside the cell during the resting state. But this value will change rapidly when there will be a stimulus or the message. So the resting membrane potential will be converted to the action potential. And what is action potential? Action potential is a rapid change in the membrane potential in response to a threshold stimulus. Action potential is spread rapidly along the nerve fiber. To conduct a nerve impulse, neurons become depolarized and lead to action potential. Threshold potential, threshold current for uh, or threshold stimulus for the action potential is almost minus 55 millivolt. What does it mean? I will explain you in coming slide. Here you can see this minus 70. Okay, don't be confused with the minus 70 and minus 90 millivolt because in the previous slides we have discussed about the minus 90 millivolt. That minus 90 millivolt is basically from the skeletal muscle and this picture is uh, uh, from the nerve cell. So consider it that the resting membrane potential, overall resting membrane potential from inside the cell is minus 70 millivolt at the resting state. But if a stimulus will be applied at this point, this negativity will be decreased and the, because of uh, uh, the change in the membrane permeability for the soda, sodium ions. So this minus 70 will become positive. First of all, it will reach up to minus 55 millivolt and as soon as it will reach the minus 55, which is a, which is a threshold stimulus, all the sodium channels will be open one by one and then what happened there will be overshoot potential and after 55 the whole membrane become depolarized right and this is known as firing of the nerve cell or the overshoot potential at 35 at plus 35 plus 30 or plus 35 or 40 almost uh, there will be minor difference in the value so at this peak values will be changed now see i will show you a video <coughs> how the action potential is generated in the nerve cell after we apply the stimulus consider in this video that we have already applied the stimulus uh, and uh, these values, this, this permeability is changing. Now see. Neurons send signals over long distances by generating and propagating action potential. Most action potential generate near the exon hillock where the concentration of sodium leaky channels is very high and this is the initial segment of the exon. It then travels to the entire length of the exon. A close look reveals that during an action potential, voltage gated channels open and close, altering the permeability of the plasma membrane to the sodium and potassium ions. A threshold stimulus changes the shape of the voltage gated sodium channels, causing their activation gates to open. This will initiate the phase 1 of the potential known as the depolarization. As the sodium ions diffuse to the exon, the membrane potential becomes less negative. This causes more voltage gated channels to open. And the membrane potential shoots to plus 30 millivolt. At this stage, voltage gated sodium channels close 
and voltage created potassium channels open these two events mark the beginning of phase 2 of action potential known as repolarization as the potassium diffuses out of the exon the membrane potential become negative again however the membrane potential continues in negative direction going beyond the resting state of minus 70 millivolt this marks the beginning of phase 3 of the action potential known as hyperpolarization during this phase voltage gated potassium channels close and all the voltage gated sodium channels are released from inactivation by the end of this phase ion moves through the leaky channels only and the membrane potential reach to the resting state of minus 70 millivolt the neuron is now ready to fire another action potential summary generation of action potential a threshold stimulus open voltage gated sodium channels sodium channels diffuse into the exon depolarize it to plus 30 millivolt now voltage gated sodium channels closes voltage gated potassium channels open potassium ion diffuse out of the exon repolarize it to negative value the membrane briefly hyperpolarizes voltage gated potassium channels close and the membrane returns to resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolt so <clears throat> we see that uh, uh, the stages of the action potential starts with the resting stage where the polarity of the membrane was uh, minus 70 millivolt or minus 90 millivolt depends upon the type of the cell and then the second stage is depolarization stage uh, depolarization stage reaches when we disturb the membrane with the help of uh, the stimulus initially there was a local current that uh, changes the polarity of the membrane and if the uh, it, this current was uh, able to change the polarity up to the threshold level then the threshold stimulus make the membrane highly permeable to the sodium ion and the sodium rush inside the cell and cell become depolarized and first of all how the depolarization occur the membrane polarity will be changed from the minus 70 millivolt towards the 55 millivolt which is a threshold stimulus and then it will overshoot to the plus 30 millivolt and then at 30 millivolt it means this is the overshoot potential and finally what happened the adjacent areas also get depolarized and send the nerve impulses up to the entire length of the exon in this way if the certain part is depolarized that part will be responsible to depolarize the adjacent part because uh, of the uh, high entry of the sodium ions and this sodium ion will move forward and depolarize the adjacent cell in this way the whole membrane of the exon will be depolarized and the nerve impulse will be traveled in the large nerve fibers greater excess of the sodium ions moving inside the cell causes the membrane potential overshoots beyond the zero level and becomes somewhat positive however in the small nerve fibers and in many central nervous system neurons depolarization potential merely approaches zero level and does not overshoot to the positive state and then the last stage is uh, uh, the repolarization which will lead to the hyperpolarization of course within a few hundred ten thousands of a second after the membrane become highly permeable to the sodium ions the sodium channel begin to close and the potassium channels open more than normal as we have already seen in the video
with how, uh, where the channels are open and closed at different stages of the action potential. Then the rapid diffusion of the potassium ions to the outside re-establish the normal negative resting membrane potential and this is called the repolarization of the membrane because membrane again become depolarized that is from positivity to negativity and then it will become minus 70. Sometimes this value will further decrease from uh, the minus 70 value that is it will become hyperpolarized or sometimes it is coreless after depolarization. One of the important aspect of the uh, action potential is that it will obey all the action potentials obey all or none law. What does it mean? It means that if the action potential occurs, first of all, the action potentials only occur when there is a threshold stimulus. If the current you are providing is less than threshold stimulus, action potential will not be generated and there will be only graded potentials. Means there is a less, uh, there is some changes in the uh, volume of the, uh, for the permeability of the sodium ions, but not the overshoot potential that is it will not reach the threshold value so uh, this is uh, the most important uh, aspect of the action potential that it will obey the all or none law either the action potential will generate or it will not generate secondly the physical characteristics of the action potential does not depend on the strength of the stimulus means once the action potential is generated it will auto spread along the cell membrane without damping that is without changing their physical characteristics its power will be same its potential will be changed same up to the end of the exon so this is just the basic uh, uh, review about uh, the ion channels different ion channels so that you can memorize their names that sodium potassium leaky channels are there voltage gated sodium channels are there voltage gated potassium channels and sodium potassium pump is there so these are the basic uh, ion channels that are responsible for the excitability of the nerve fibers and tissues just a quick review about the sodium potassium leaky channels these channels play a role in the local current that depolarize the membrane potential from negativity towards the positivity after getting a stimulus so basically uh, its leaky channel role is uh, in the uh, action potential in such that it, when the action potential starts, uh, the permeability for the sodium will become increased uh, too much at the particular part which is the exon hillock. Uh, so the permeability at the sodium uh, for the sodium will increase too much at the exon hillock and the sodium will rush in a large amount into the cell and cause the uh, depolarization of the cell membrane and not only that particular part will be depolarized but it will continue up to the end of the membrane so this is the very important uh, because uh, of the leaky channel uh, it will start the local uh, membrane potential depolarization and then it will lead to the threshold potential and then lead to the uh, overshoot potential when a large amount of sodium is inside the cell and then come to the voltage gated sodium channel we have already studied the activation and inactivation of the sodium channel activation uh, uh, and the, during the resting state uh, the activation gate is closed for the sodium uh, but the inactivation gate is open while in the activation state the channel uh, the sodium ion you know and the activation gate is open as well as inactivation gate is also open during the activated state but after the uh, overshoot potential what happened the uh, activation gate remain open up for the some, some for some time but the inactivation gate become closed however for the voltage gated potassium channel uh, there is only one gate which is inside the cell and uh, the potassium channel uh, uh, potassium gated channel uh, voltage gated channel become closed during the resting state but it become open during uh, after uh, the sodium channels become 
uh, closed during the action potential but it it remain close it remain open for some time so that more and more potassium will move outside and create negativity inside the cell now come to the propagation opening of the sodium channel generate local current circuit that depolarize the adjacent membrane opening more and more sodium channels and this will continue you see at rest no entry of the uh, sodium to the voltage gated channel and then you can see when there is a stimulus there is local depolarization okay so some area is pol uh, depolarized and then this the wave of depolarization will travel further okay and it will uh, depolarize the adjacent cell membrane and then it will continue and propagate up to the entire length of uh, the exon and this way action potential can travel now come to the signal transmission uh, the, the one of the important thing that uh, I need to share with you is the uh, myelination there um, myelin is a, a basically a sheath uh, which is present on the, the nerve cell and it is made up of Schwann cells. Schwann cells surround the exon forming a myelin sheath. And sheath is interrupted every 1 millimeter and this interruption is known as node of Ranbir. This is very important uh, for uh, the fast conduction of the uh, nerve impulse. You know the action potential only occur at the node of Ranbir because of the presence of the sodium channels. You know, uh, sodium channels uh, in the in the next slide you can see. Okay, uh, the sodium channels are only present at the nodes of the Ranbir, and the other part is insulated, so that when the action potential will travel from this part, for example, from here to here, we don't need to waste the time in opening all the sodium channels. There is a high concentration of sodium ions, sodium channels, sorry. So, the, a large amount of sodium will rush into the cell and it will move forward and then uh, it will depolarize this part the, where the sodium channels are present and this will depolarize. As a result, a large amount of sodium will enter into the cell and it will continue. So, because of the presence of the this insulation, the speed of conduction will be increased there is one more benefit of uh, uh, the presence of the myelin sheath is that it will protect uh, because a million of the neurons are present so it will protect uh, the messaging from mixing up because of the insulation one neuron message will continue in its own exon not on the other because of uh, the myelin also so this is one of uh, the function but uh, the main function is the uh, uh, to increase the conduction velocity of the nerve cell thank you so much i hope you understand uh, the basics of uh, the nerve conduction through the uh, nerve cell and how the nerve impulse is uh, trans more transmitted from one neuron to another neuron and transmit the signals and the messages to the other cells. Thank you so much.